that I call Rag Sambadini Shrikala. And uh, hopefully it will become more clear as we go along why I call it that. Mm, um, so, I'll get on with the lecture now. Um, Swar Bhed Rahasya. Uh, it's a slightly ambitious uh, title for an uh, ambitious subject. Um, what I'm going to try and do is uh, keep the lecture very quick and very brief so that we don't get bogged down by technicalities and we don't get bored by the science. And uh, hopefully we can have some fun with the musical principles behind what I'm talking about. And uh, I'm going to leave a lot of time for an extended uh, question answer session or an interactive session so that um, really hopefully I can uh, speak to what is in your minds, all of your minds, uh, in, as regards the mystery of the notes, uh, Hindustani notes versus Western notes, uh, why there are seven, why there are twelve, etc., etc. So, um, just a brief overview of what we'll be talking about, how sound works, um, what what is the fundamental nature of sound, how music works as a uh, as a aesthetic arrangement of sound and silence, pitch, notes, and harmony, the kind of basic musical elements. We'll talk about that. Hindustani music tuning. Tuning meaning what are the notes that we use. Uh, what are the pitches, the specific frequencies or frequency ratios that we use? If anything I'm saying right now doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. Hopefully it'll make sense by the end of my lecture, or if not, at least by the end of the question answers. And uh, then we'll see how the Western music system is uh, different from our own, uh, although it's becoming widely prevalent even in um, the subcontinent. And lastly, we'll look at um, a new kind of programming language and uh, a, a software that I've created in that for uh, making using technology to um, enhance the accessibility of Hindustani classical music, traditional and pure, um, democratizing, uh, democratizing it so that it's accessible and available to everyone uh, without studying for 10 or 20 years with a great master. <laughs> Um, so hopefully uh, these are some of the takeaways. After this, hopefully you will understand why certain swar sound better together as opposed to certain other swar. In other words, harmony versus disharmony, or harmony versus discord. Understand how the Indian, uh, how the Hindustani tuning system is different from the Western system, and the 22 shrutis that are talked about in so many uh, medieval and ancient texts. Uh, understand a little bit from a modern scientific perspective how uh, they came to be or how they come to be. And uh, if you would like, then the instrument that I'll be, the software instrument that I'll be using to demonstrate much of this, uh, you can take it and use it at home. So, um, uh, this is the first part that is a bit technical. It's uh, basically the physics of music, how sound works and how uh, music works as a result of that. So, I'm going to Keep going with this. Uh, if at any point you have any questions immediately uh, pertaining to this, like if you don't understand something I'm saying right away, uh, please feel free to uh, just uh, you know interrupt and ask a question. But otherwise, we'll like I said, we'll have an extended. Just a small. Yes, one. please. Uh, your slide says Indian, you say Hindustani. Uh, are you looking for the right word still? Meaning, or is it something larger? I'm like looking for the right, right word. Because you want uh, to call it something where raga music is, like South Asian or yes, subcontinental. Because probably. Raga raga music would be a better Because word. province of rag is wider than Indian or Hindustani. Absolutely. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And the 22 Shrutis apply down south, or you know, it's not. Huh. I, I avoid talking specifically about Karnataka a lot just because I'm don't, don't, not don't, an authority don't, on don't, it don't. at all. But I'm saying the principles you're going to talk about of sound are universal. The physics principles are, are yeah. certainly universal, so. but we'll we'll see how then the physics gets modified and uh, uh, tempered uh, uh, by the cultural uh, ambience. Uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So in this section um, and characteristics and um, a string being the simplest in a way, uh, physically simplest way, form of producing musical sound. We'll we'll look at that. I've got a guitar for demonstration. So. Um, the creation of sound, um, just to remind everyone of this is all just very basic uh, stuff. Uh, any physical object vibrates, that vibration makes the air around it vibrate, and those vibrations are called sound waves. The sound waves travel through the medium, which is air. The, those air vibrations or sound waves hit our ears and are translated into nervous impulses, which reach our brain and get converted into sound. 
as a very brief explanation, overview of how sound works. Um, we can kind of skip over this part, but these are just the three basic characteristics of sound. Um, amplitude, frequency, and spectral distribution. The spectral distribution is the one that sounds most scary, but uh, please don't be uh, scared by it because that's the one we'll be, in a sense, looking at the most to explain harmony in particular. Um, now for this, I'm just going to come here and demonstrate something on the guitar. So, can everyone hear me if I just talk? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Perfect. So, um, I've got a guitar just for ease of use. Ideally, we would have had a tanpura, but they're not so easy to manipulate and you'll see once I do what I'm going to be doing. Can you hear that? Okay. Now, so just I'll give you uh, just a few seconds, uh, 10 or 20 seconds of just playing this one string. What I'd like you to do is um, pay attention to the complete sound of that of this string. Normally what we're used to doing is uh, simplifying listening, meaning that we listen to something that's quite complex and we try and mentally simplify it or abstract it to its basic form. That is how we perceive pitch. You know, I'm playing something, that sound is actually quite complex, but you hear one single note. So now I want you to know, of course, that Sa is being played in the context of the Tankura that's going on, but try and listen for the other sounds that you hear in this, in the sound of the string. Um, Ashish, yeah. can you turn the swarbeti off because then we can't focus on the string. Ash Especially as the sound decays, uh, as it dies out, try and listen to how the sound is morphing, the nature of the sound is changing. Maybe you can hear other things. Yeah? Would anyone like to share what they heard? Or put differently, could you hear any note other than the obvious note, which is the sa? That was basically what the student was playing. No, notes lower than that. Lower, higher. Could anyone hear any other notes? The octave. The octave, okay. So which means upar kasa in Hindustani words. The mere plucking gives you a lot of energy in the beginning, a lot of bright energy in the beginning. Yes. And as the sound dies out, uh -huh. then you get a pure note. Okay, excellent observation. We'll, we'll see. Examine that in more detail. Now I'm going to help your aid your ears by <coughs> spelling out these notes. So this is like trying to understand a word. Can't understand the spelling. I'm just going to spell it out. spelling them out in Hindustani terms this time. So, <coughs> just in case anyone's not familiar with the basic uh, musical scale. Sa, re, ga, ma, pa, dha, ni, sa, sa, ni, dha, pa, ma, ga, re, sa, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, do, do, si, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. So this is the standard in, in Hindustani terms called the Shuddha scale. In, um, Karnatic called Shankara Bharanam, in yeah. Western uh, called uh, called the major scale uh, or Ionian mode for those who are historically inclined, like Punita perhaps. Uh, the ray, the Western scale is is little is our formal ray, right? Uh, no, the ray is still Shuddha. Okay. So um, so now so that's just as a reference, and now talking about the notes, I'm kind of plucking here. 
sa sa actually it's a low sa but i'll just sing it like that because i can't reach there sa and then we have as we said the upar ka sa sa again i'll transpose that down to the octave sa sa pa sa sa pa sa this one full octave where we have the sa pa sa and then we go even higher sa just one more time just for a few seconds just try and listen again and see if you can hear these notes while i'm not using this hand at all and while i'm just plucking the open string see if you can perceive any of these notes that i spelled out within that one sound Hear any other notes? A little bit. If you concentrate, then you. Yes. Notice. Yes. It takes a little, a little time. Now we'll get into explaining what's happening here. Um, I'll just show you a brief video about mm -hmm. um, the motion of a plucked string, as you can see. What happens when a string is plucked? The string starts out with an So um, I just showed you that to, uh, because it's something that um, many people find hard to believe. Uh, I especially remember my dad when I started talking about all these things and I bored the hell out of my family by um, making them listen to this stuff again and again. Uh, the fact that more than one note, in fact many, many notes, come from just one string, just when you pluck it, without any um, pressing or adjusting any notes. So whether it's a guitar, sarod, sitar, banjo, santur, any of these string instruments, they're all operating on the same basic principle. You have a string of a defined length, defined thickness, and defined tension. And that, and when you pluck it, or when you bow it for that matter, but plucking is much easier to understand, you create, produce a sound which is normally perceived as one note, but actually has all these notes within it. And these notes, um, that are produced by the single plucking, plucked string, they follow a very specific pattern. And that pattern is, in nature, is, is a natural phenomenon. So it's a thing given by physics. Uh, we won't get too much into the physics of exactly explaining why it happens, uh, just because I want to focus on the musical part. But if anyone's interested, you can ask questions about that later. Um, so this pattern of notes is called the harmonic series. Harmonic because it's, it's, in, it's in a certain harmony. 
there's a certain pattern and that's the exact same series that I was showing you on the guitar. When I was putting my left hand finger on the various points in the string, I was playing what in guitar language is fairly common, it's called harmonics. And harmonics are the same thing as we're, we're seeing here. Uh, these are otherwise, uh, in more technical language, these are called overtones. So you're talking about someone was asking about notes under, but these are all notes that are above the note that we normally call the note of the string. That's why they're called overtones. And they follow this pattern. So the pattern that we saw, the, if we, again, switching back to Hindustani terms, if we call the string, the basic note, sa, then the next note is the octave or the uparka sa, the, the, strip, the notes after that are pa and sa, and then you have sa, ga, pa, ni, sa, and then you have sa, re, ga, ma, etc, 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 and then it keeps going. Um, and of course the nature of these notes are not always what uh, we kind of normally expect, the kind of should the notes or the normal notes that we're used to, some of them are, some of them are not, and we'll see more about that why. Um, this is just a summary. Um, this is the physics stuff that I'm skipping over. Uh, yeah, I'm skipping all the jargon. <laughs> um, another tiny uh, video, just to see this. So this is showing you, this is kind of doing the opposite of the first one. The first one was just to show you how that plug travels. This one is to show you how those different harmonics can be seen physically and visually. So this is, relate this to the notes that I was playing. So this is the sa, N1, so this is the first, this is the fundamental, what's called the fundamental. N2, the first harmonic, the, what I was playing on the 12th fret. 3, this is a pa. You have one third the wavelength, you have pa. This is 4, we're back to sa. This is uparka, uparka sa. 5, this is a ga in Hindustani terms, a major third. 6, this is again a pa. Double of 3 is 6, pa etc, etc. And then it'd go on to 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 was the last one that I did on the looks guitar. looks like beautiful. Yes. Painting thing. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, and so, the, what, what, what is shown very obviously there, because they're doing it artificially with a sine oscillator and a you know, physical string, uh, happens here in a much more complex form. So, uh, sorry, my guru has just come. Mustafa <laughs> so. <laughs> so, um, so on, on the guitar string, all these things are happening simultaneously in a much more, in a much less obvious uh, form, form, of course. Um, so uh, so that's how you get these um, these all these notes happening simultaneously. What's that? <coughs> so so now we're gonna try and transition from the physics side of things to the musical side of things, how music works. Again, a very ambitious title. So um, here we'll look at what we've seen so far, the musical attributes of sound in the harmonic or overtone series. So the, the three ones that we talked about earlier, now I'm just giving the perceivable qualities of sound. Amplitude, which is a physical description of sound, uh, we perceive as volume, higher volume, lower volume. Frequency, Frequency is the key one that we'll be dealing with here. Um, frequency is perceived as pitch. So for example, you saw those uh, N1, N2 things happening in that video. Um, for example, Western music has defined frequencies somewhere around 263 hertz is middle C, for example. So anyone anyone in the world knows that if you play a 263 hertz sound of any, carry, of any kind, you're playing a C. And so people can tune. That's how tuners work. That's how huge orchestral ensembles can come together and just play and tune, be in tune. Because they just have to know that, oh, are you tuning to an A? Are you tuning, tuning to a C? What are you tuning to? Hindustani doesn't quite work like that, especially in the traditional way. We have uh, a very variable and a relative note system. We'll come back to that difference later. But uh, of course, nowadays, most times, or not most times, but many times, we use the Western system as a guide, as a reference point, as a grid. Uh, so, for example, the tanpura that I'm playing, obviously it's a virtual tanpura. I couldn't, uh, I don't have a real tanpura to bring. But in that, for example, you're using the Western pitches to say what your sa is. And so you're following that same grid pattern. What is what a defined frequency giving a defined pitch? And lastly, you have the spectral distribution. 
Spectral distribution, now I can explain, just means what is the particular composition of all those other overtones. So aside from that main sound, which I'll, since I'll keep referring to it, it again and again, I'll just clarify, it's called the fundamental, because that's the fundamental tone of the string. It's as if the string is, the whole string is vibrating, that sound is called the fundamental. And that's, in Hindustani, we'll call it the sa, the lowest possible sa, then the next, etc., etc. So, uh, so how is it? The timber is basically, you can understand it as, if a guitar plays a sa, if a sitar plays a sa, if a sarod plays a sa, and even if a violin or a rudravina or a, you know, electric guitar, a rock guitar plays a sa, you can all tell if, you know, obviously you have some musical experience that it's the same note, it's the exact same note, which means what? That their fundamentals are matching. And yet, almost anyone who's heard them before will be able to say that, no, this is a guitar, this is not a sarod, this is not a, a, a veena, this is not a violin. Why is that? because they have different proportions and different arrangements of those overtones, of those other sounds that are not just the fundamental. That is why we can tell one instrument from another, even if they're playing the same sound. Yeah, please. Shouldn't duration be there as well, as a fundamental attribute of something? Uh, it's a fundamental attribute of um, music, <coughs> and uh, you can possibly call it a fundamental attribute. It's, it's not quite... Uh, as precisely physically definable, which is why I haven't included it. Uh, as in, it's it's uh, just a matter. Usually, when we see there are usually these four attributes: Achha. it's pitch, duration, amplitude, and timbre. Okay. Okay. So duration is something. Oh, so I'll question. take that as a suggestion. I'll maybe include that next time. Um, so, and now we come back to the harmonic series. Uh, again, I'll skip over the physics. Blah blah blah. Um, just. The, the main point from this is that we have all these different notes that are all climbing in frequency. In, uh, just a tidbit, frequency is the inverse of wavelength. So visually, especially since sir, you appreciated that uh, the visual of that vibrating string, uh, when the string vibrates as a whole, that, uh, so that's the full wavelength, or that's actually half the wavelength, that produces the fundamental. As those uh, fractions get smaller, and it's, and it's as if part of the string is vibrating, Visually, even as you saw, it was broken up into those sections which kept decreasing in size and increasing in number as that kept increasing. Uh, so the smaller the wavelength, the higher the frequency. That's why they're overtones, because in frequency terms, the frequencies are always higher. In wavelength, they're smaller. And the product is the speed of sound. Yeah. And the product is? The speed. Uh, not quite. Speed of sound would relate to how fast the sound is traveling, which is in the medium. I mean, that's the whole physics thing. And honestly, in music, we don't deal with the speed of sound unless you're doing some super precise computer music. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all. So again, sounds to us like one sound with a definite pitch, the fundamental. Like initially, or you know, possibly for many of us, we could only hear that one note, that is the fundamental. But as we saw, there are other notes happening within this. Um, the basics of music creation. Uh, we'll talk about all of these, melody and harmony, harmonic series, just intonation. Again, a technical term, which just means basically the notes. Uh, I mean, at a very simplistic lay person level, it's, it means the, sh the kind of natural notes that we use in uh, rag music. Um, in the West, now it is also catching on. It is becoming a big thing to use just intonation. So, uh, and then the Shuddha Saptak, which, which I already sang and demonstrated, Sarigama Padanisa Sanidapa Magarisa, or major mode, major scale. Okay. So, melody and harmony. Um, frequency is the physical attribute, pitch uh, is the perception of it. And when we have a certain defined pitch, uh, which is used in a musical context, that pitch becomes a note. So that's how, that's what a musical note is basically. So right now I'm just kind of deconstructing these things that most of us, especially working in and around music, take for granted. We all know intuitively what a note is. We all sing them. Uh, and I, I think I literally mean we all, because I think there's almost no one who doesn't sing at all. Everyone loves claiming that they're not a singer, but people do sing. So whether it's in the shower or at home or, any, or professionally on stage, whatever. Um, so these things we sing, the minute like, no, that's a note, that's a, uh, which means it has a defined pitch. Uh, now we, again, are introducing the element of time. Notes in a linear sequence, which means notes coming one after the other, 
form a melody. So if I say, ta na na ta na na ta na, ta na na ta na 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 na. Very very simple melody. Does anyone recognize it? Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. So that. What did I do? I just took three notes. Sa re ga. And then I arranged them in a certain pattern, repeating some of them, waiting sometimes with some silence, so again introducing the time element, and then that became a melody. Vertical stack. If instead of uh, arranging the notes one after the other in time, we stack them such that they're playing at the same time and we have certain notes, that's when you have harmony. And harmony is something very commonly associated with Western classical music, Western European music. Um, but I'd like to make the argument that uh, contrary to popular perception, uh, harmony is super important in Hindustani music and in rag music in general. And the reason I'll give for that is the Shruti or Tanpura or whatever drone reference that we are using, no Hindustani classical music and uh, no Carnatic music uh, either would be considered a genuine uh, classical performance piece practice without that reference point. The sa is so important in our music that without it, it doesn't feel like classical. Like if I just start singing now, do, do you know what I'm singing? I mean, it's, it's, uh, again, if you've heard a lot, you can probably make an estimated guess, but it's very hard. But the minute I put this on, you can feel something. You can, I'm actually trying to sing a rag. It's coming horrible, obviously, because I'm talking more, so forgive my singing. <laughs> But uh, the reason there's this difference is because of the centrality of harmony. When each note is sung in the context of Sa, not just Sa, but actually the Tanpura is playing Per and Sa. And uh, most times the Tanpura is playing two notes at least. Sa and Per, or Sa and Ni, Sa and Ma. These are some of the common ones that are used with the Tanpura. Uh, the secondary note kind of depends on the preference of the musician. Um, so, if I'm singing any note other than Sa and Per, we actually have what in Western music is con commonly called a chord. Uh, so chords are kind of the central uh, basis of at least common practice uh, classical art music in Western tradition. Uh, chord progression is basically how you analyze uh, large structures of music, even symphonies and stuff. You look at them in terms of Roman numeral ana analysis and all that, which means basically showing how you move from one chord to the other. And the equivalent in Hindustani is rags. Um, this is of course an oversimplification, but like basically what I'm just looking at is how are you understanding the music? Because both musics are using uh, notes, and both musics by and large at a super simplified uh, level, uh, don't kill me, musicians, has 12 notes. <laughs> uh, we'll get into the shades of why that's not true in just a minute, but uh, again, from a lay perspective, 12 notes exist in both uh, rag music, uh, Hindustani, and in uh, Western classical, and in many other systems of the world. Um, how we are understanding the arrangements of these notes differs. So for example, if uh, a piece of music is using them in terms of chords and moving from one chord to the other, uh, then we call it chordal progression music, uh, which is very common in Western classical. If the rag, if the notes only certain notes are used, and they're used only in a certain way, with a certain um, manner of rendering them, as well as a certain way of moving from one to the other, then it's called a rag. And that's how Hindustani or Carnatic interprets uh, those notes. Um, so now the harmonic series. Um, I'll, uh, we already, everyone more or less remembers the guitar demonstration? Of, or should I, I'll just do a quick vocal demonstration just to get us back into that mindset. <clears throat> so now again I'm going to try and attempt to do what I did on the guitar. I'm going to hold one note. So my throat, my vocal cords, the normal method of singing is going to only have one note. 
with my mouth, I'm going to adjust the shape and position of my lips, tongue, etc., etc., and and pull out from this uh, rich spectrum being produced by my vocal cords. I'm going to pluck out certain overtones. So initially, you'll hear that one note. As my mouth keeps moving or my tongue keeps moving, try and see if you can hear the different changing emphasized overtones. <coughs> Perceive some other notes. So again, they were the same notes that in the guitar I was using the left finger to pluck in the sa sa pa sa ga pa ni sa sa re ga ma ga re sa ni pa. And a few of these notes, um, you can hear if you listen carefully and you spend some time with it. You can hear it in the tanpura. So if you hear again now, listen carefully to the tanpura. This especially uh, prominent is what I call, you know, is, I mean, again, this is software, so it has its limitation, but like a very beautiful, well-tuned uh, tanpura, for example, if my ustad tunes a tanpura, you will hear a ga, what I like to call the swayambhu ga, it's, it's an automatic ga, there's no ga tuned on the harmonium, I mean on the tanpura, sorry, uh, but it comes, it comes naturally from that arrangement, and the reason it comes is because it is one of the harmonics, one of the overtones, one of the partials of that sa. So now, just see if you can perceive it. I'll sing it, I'll, I'll let you hear it, and then I'll sing it. What's especially prominent is listen for the. I'll slow it down a bit, and now listen to each plucked string. The first plucked string, which is uh, oh, sorry, the last plucked string, which is a lower sa. It's a very low note. Listen to that carefully, and you'll almost invariably hear. What's called the, that's the seventh harmonic, uh, sorry, seventh partial, um, and that knee is much lower uh, than most of the knees that we commonly use. Um, it's definitely way lower than the uh, than the knee on a piano uh, or um, in some rags at least. So, uh, so how the harmon now we're looking at basically how, how the harmonic series gives us musical material, how it informs our music. And from that now, we'll come to the, the core of the talk, which is arriving at those numbers. Seven notes, 12, uh, sorry, Sattaswar, 12 notes, and Bai Shutya. <coughs> so one is, of course, uh, a very direct and straightforward thing. This, this harmonic series, as I've said again and again, is a natural phenomenon, so obviously it's universal. Um, the notes of that mu uh, harmonic series are sometimes just taken directly into a musical system. Now we're getting also, uh, we're going from physics, universality, to cultural, culturally specific music systems. So in Hindustani music, for example, um, I'm, I'm going to stick to Hindustani, just because I don't want to make assertions about Karnatic or Afghanistani or anything like that. Um, so these are, of course, the reason why these are so fundamental, why 90% or you know a high percent of Tanpura tunings, uh, if you go to any Hindustani performance, will be in sa, in pa sa sa sa, or sa pa sa, because sa and pa are the first two notes 
in this harmonic series and they're taken directly from the harmonic series they are super harmonious together we'll also see that the harmonic series it's aptly named because it's a it's a measure of harmony of coming together of blending together sounding nice together so the lower the note is like the sooner it occurs in the harmonic series the more harmonious it is so i for the first two notes that's why they sound the most stable the most good the blend they blend well together the most that's why they're consist of like 75 to 90% of tanpura tunings then you have the um so that's the third harmonic um i'm translating i'm again we'll come to the math later but just really quickly the third harmonic uh, is uh, the pa the fifth harmonic is that ga that we saw why is it fifth because the sequence as we went so sa sa pa sa ga pa ni that's the sequence if i do it in actual octaves so that ga was the fifth and the ninth harmonic is actually a re that's the one you heard in the guitar or when i was doing the overtones you could hear that the upar ka upar ka sa uske upar jo re hai that's the first re that comes in the harmonic series but if you just kind of transpose it back down that's the re that we use in many ra so that's the kind of uh, standard shuddha re um 9 by 8 proportion or a normal major second and this again is so uh, common because anyway we'll see that so second way in which we can use the harmonic series is instead of taking actual notes or actual frequencies and then relating them to sa we take intervals now intervals is something that we don't uh, commonly talk of in hindustani but actually hindustani music is all about intervals it has nothing else because in in western music you can talk about a d or a, or an f sharp and automatically you know that okay an f sharp is approximately yeah it's a 330 hertz if it's f sharp 3 you know you add a number and it's a specific universally fixed if you say tivra ma what does tivra ma mean nobody like not even my ustad can actually sing a tivra ma if i don't give him a reference point because any note in the world can be a tivra ma if i say that this is the sa then of course he can sing a tivra ma so the reason he no one can sing that note without a sa is because that definition is an intervallic definition it is defining a relationship between one frequency the sa and the destination frequency or the note that we're trying to sing and that relationship is what defines the swar that's a tivra ma why because it has a certain relationship to the sa so now like i said the first few relationships that we find in the harmonic series the sa pa relationship or what's called sa pa sambhav If you try to Hindi as it or going to the Hindustani lingo, uh, sa pa sambhav just means the relationship between a sa and pa, and that relationship can exist between anything, as we'll see. It doesn't have to be just a sa pa, but that relationship can exist elsewhere. That's the first. Then the madhyam. If you the again now I'm getting into slightly um, higher things that are not written, but sa pa is you're traveling a certain musical distance from sa going upwards. Sa pa. I'm going to be basic, right? so forgive that. But sa pa. You're going up to sa, uh, up to pa from sa. If the, you took that same distance and instead of going up to pa, you went downwards from that same sa with the same direction, what would you arrive at? <coughs> Does anyone know? Ma. Ma. Why? Because mo is in that sense the inverse of pa. You go up that distance, you come to pa. If from sa you go down that distance, you come to mo. Sa pa sa. Mo sa. That's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is why is it? Why did I call it the inverse? Mo is that note of whose pa. is sa or that I means it gets very unwieldy but basically that note whose pa is sa is ma so ma ka pa kya hai sa hai sa ma now just suppose uh, i think of that ma as my sa sa ma ma so this is a ma now i'm going to convert it into sa 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 re ga ma pa sa re ga ma pa pa sa pa yeah it's 
say no. That's how mo is defined. That and so that relationship is a sa mo relationship. Um, and if we bring it down to sa, I mean that's how the madhyam gets created. Now the third, uh, the fourth one listed here is the gandhar. That's the ga in common language. That's that swayambhu ga, the same ga that we heard earlier in the tantra. We can still hear, or uh, that I played on the guitar. Sa ga. Hopefully I'm singing it accurately, but um, uh, so that's a gandha. So again, that's a relationship. We'll see the maths of how that works. When we take that relationship, we can derive new notes by going starting from different notes. Um, the first three distinct notes of the harmonic series, like I already, we already covered this. So sa 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 pa sa sa ga pa ni sa ri ga pa ga ri sa. Uh, harmonic series. The first three notes, distinct notes were sa, pa, and then ga. So if you just rearrange them in kind of sequence, bring them down to one octave, you have sa, ga, pa. Now, because these three are the first notes of the harmonic series, that's why in Western music it's very obvious the major triad or the major chord, uh, a one, three, five, or a sa, ga, pa. I'm just saying the same thing in different languages um, to convey how basic, essential, and how universal this is. Um, so you can see that same centrality of this saga pa in Western music. It's very obvious and overt because the major, major chord is kind of the home chord. How you come home, how you resolve music. In Hindustani terms, the sa pa is more what we think of as home in terms of the tantra having that always on. But also the saga is used to uh, create or to uh, estimate notes, um, which we'll see how. So just remember that saga and pa in these relationships, the sharja. Uh, I mean, I've used the classical names here, but I'll just say the easy names for now for us. So the sapa relationship, primary and secondary, the saga relationship. Uh, the physics stuff, but um, yeah, we already saw all this. I'm, I'm just going to keep skipping over anything that's a little technical. Sorry, sir. What is the prime number limit for intervals? I'm curious. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so these uh, th these relationships, we can see if we give numbers to these partials. So the fundamental is one, uh, the second partial is two, etc., and so on and so forth. So what were the notes that we had? We had sa, then we had sa pa, uh, or I'll go like this: sa, uh, sa, sa pa, sa ga pa ni. Sa, Re, Ga. These are the first 10 harmonics in Hindustani terms. Now out of this, um, if you just look at these numbers, the, the first time Pa is occurring is here. The third uh, harmonic was a Pa. Um, so the ratio of that Pa, that third harmonic, to the closest Sa is what gives you the relationship of a Pa. So 3 by 2 if anyone's familiar with basic ratio language. 3 by 2 is the frequency ratio of a per. What does that mean? I mean, it's it's very simple math. It's just, uh, you know, middle school level math. Um, what it means is if 100 hertz is sa, then the frequency of per will be given by the ratio of 3 by 2 in relation to that 100 hertz. So, we, yeah, exactly. So you just multiply 100 hertz by 3 by 2 which is 100 into 3 by 2 is 150. And you can also see that uh, if you see it physically, again, if you go back to that video, just visualize that video, you saw the string first vibrating as a whole, then vibrating in halves. And I told you that was the uparkasa because it's ha. And then when it was vibrating in thirds, that means one third. So now literally you see the wavelength, you saw it as one third of the wavelength is, is the effective wavelength. So if it's the wavelength is one third, the frequency becomes three times. That's a perk. So uh, now the next four won't yield a new note because that's just an upar kasa. So the next note, new note that you get is a ga, which is five, again a prime number, right? So it moves from one prime to another. The new notes, the kind of fundamentally new notes come from prime numbers. That's why you have prime number limits on tuning systems. So if you tune only things by pa, uh, by per, I was gonna demonstrate that, but um, yeah, if we have time later, I'll, I'll actually demonstrate a kind of actual tuning exercise. Um, so if you 
uh, how these things work whereby you take sa, you tune up, you tune the second string to pur. And this is described actually in the uh, Natya Shastra or one of, one of those books, Sharangadev's uh, Sangeet Ratnakar, or one of those medieval or ancient texts. Uh, this Veena experiment is mentioned, where you take two Veenas, you fix one and you have the other one moving with movable frets or with movable tuning, and you start tuning. So you take Sa, you tune up to Per, then you take Per as a Sa, just like I did with the Mer, then you tune up to its Per. What you get is a Re. Now Re is the ninth partial, but 9 is not a prime number. So Re is not considered like an extremely new uh, relationship in a fundamental sense. So again, we'll have to get into complicated maths to really understand, but basically 9 is not a new, because a per of a per is a ray, right? That's how you get the ray. Whereas the ni, the seventh partial, that that's something totally new. That seven you can never get by anywhere else. You can't, no matter how much you tune sapa, 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 keep going up, you can't get that ni. That's why it's a fundamentally new thing. So you could use that interval or that ratio, that relationship in your music as well, and then it would be a seven limit music. In in norm in again mainstream terms, the way Hindustani music works, its limit is five. So other than the saga sandha, we don't use it. I'm using I'm deliberately saying it's mainstream. So of course there are other there are specific musics that you know use a lot more, but the the kind of textbook case that we'll look at will only go up to five. That's what that prime number limit meant. So, so now we come to the core, like I was saying. Why are there seven notes? This seven notes is not just Hindustani. It's Hindustani, uh, Carnatic, of course, uh, Western uh, classical music, and many others which I won't know. This this so-called major scale, Shuddha Saptak, um, or Shankarabharanam, is very universal. Why is this so? Sa, sa, ka, pa. Like I said, from Sa, you do the Sagapa, sa, ga, pa, the first three notes of the harmonic series, you get Sagapa. Now suppose you go to Pa, uh, yeah, so this is that. Now we're introducing the language of the ratios. These numbers indicate the frequency ratios that I've already talked about. So the Sa is one by one, because it's just the fundamental. The Pa is a three by two, the wavelength is one third, the frequency is three by two, so 100 hertz to 150 hertz. And the girl is 5 by 4 because it was the fifth partial, and so its relationship to the closest sa is a 5 by 4. Uh, so its frequency will be 125. Again, if you just you just have to do the math. So that relationship, sa ka pa, gives you these three notes. So now we have three notes. Um, now suppose I take pa again as my sa. I'm going to take pa as my sa, and I'm going to apply the same relationship, the same major triad. So saga pa, I'm now going to do from pa. So first I'll sing it, and then I'll put it up here. Saga pa, sa. Remember pa is sa. Saga pa, pa ga sa. Saga pa, pa ga sa. Yeah, saga. So now it's sounding fine. It's sounding the same. Saga pa. Now I'll increase the tankura and just try and tell me. I'm going to sing it using the same language of per. So I'm going to call them by the notes as if per is sa. But now see if you can spot what is the note in actual terms in terms of the real sa that we originally had. Sa, sa. So this is of course a per. We already knew that. Sa, ga. What is this note? Ga. Hear it in this context of sa. Ga. Ga, anyone? Ga. Ni. ni. Exactly. You can, the minute you hear it in context, again, that harmonic relationship, it's a ni. It's very obvious. It's a shuddha ni. So, uh, and now. Sa, sa, ga, pa, pa. Ray, exactly, upar ka re. So the shuddha re, exactly what I was telling you. So that's what I meant when I was saying the per of per is a ray. If you take per as your sa, its per is what is actually the shuddha ray in the context of sa. So now you can see we have three more notes. First we had sa, ga, per, 100, 150, 125, 100, uh, 150. Then we had 
if with the boys song we have two more pani re sa ga pa pani re yeah um the frequ- the ratios are given here 3 by 2 and you just have to keep multiplying how the math works if you just think of simple fractional multiplication and division you will you will get to these numbers divisions would give you the interval exactly so 3 by 2 was the per so if you multiply 3 by 2 by 3 by 2 you get the per of per and english translates very simply very straightforwardly into maths of means multiplication we learned that in board maths etc etc so 3 the per of per means 3 by 2 into 3 by 2 which gives 9 by 8 we normalize that 8 i'll get into that later but The, the denominator doesn't matter so much as long as you keep dividing by and multiplying by two is always free. So just remember that in, in music, division or multiplication by two, either denominator or multiple uh, or numerator doesn't matter much. It's free. Uh, it's just normalizing octaves. It's just going from one octave to the other. So uh, and then the nine by eight. So we already got. So now we got. So now how many notes do we have? The pa is common in both. So six notes if you look look at it blindly. But then one is common. So you take that away. Now we have five notes. We have a saga pa, and then we have a ni re. And now, if you do that same thing again, I'll do it to the ma. This is the three primary notes because uh, if you go up by pa, you uh, up by right about you get to pa. If you go down, you get to ma. So we'll take these three notes. Sa. Instead of going down, I'll just go up to the same note just because it's easier to sing. <coughs> Sa ma. sa sa ga pa ga sa ga pa pa sa ga pa okay that's the context sa now again i'll slowly sing each note tell me what the note is sa sa ha huh? ma yes sing pa sorry you said pa sa Hear this very carefully with the tanpura and tell me what note it is. Sa ma the ma. That's what we said. We're going to sa sa ga na. What is this note? Da. Your last name. Close. <laughs> da. This is the da. Um. Sama da sa ga. Sa ga pa. What is this note? Pa. Pa. Sa. Sa. Yeah, you can hear it. It's back to sa. Like I said again, just showing you again what I said. The the pa of ma is a sa. That is why it's a ma. Sa. So now, so now we got these four by three. This is uh this is the ma. Five by three. That's the dha. And two by one just means upper ka sa. So one by one was normal sa. Two by one is upper ka sa. So now we have. Now I'll just sing all of these. We have the sa ga pa. Sa ga pa pa ni re ma da sa. Yeah. So these and again. So we have three into three. That's nine. But again, two of the notes are always common. In the pa one, the pa pa in, uh, in the sa chord and the pa chord, the pa is repeated, and in the sa chord and the ma chord, the sa is repeated. So from that nine, we take away two, we get seven. This is the shuddh sabda. Okay, what is the fa three? Fa. Uh, these are the Western notes. The bracket ones are the Western notes. If you take C, if you consider C as your sa, if your tonic is C. Then uh, those are the Western equivalents. I've just given them so that people who are more familiar with Western music can like understand it better. Um, so, so now you have sa ga pa pa ni re ma da sa. And all you have to do is transpose them down. The re was the only one that went high. We'll bring that down to our normal octave, and we'll just arrange it in sequence, and we we'll get exactly this. Sa re ga. And this, so now we have our first major question. Why are there seven notes? Is because of this. Is a major triad on the first three major notes. Three, remember, is a very powerful number. We all have lots of mythical, mythological, religious 
spiritual uh, significance of the number three. So just think of it as the magic number three into itself. So if we doubly magicize, magicize it. Three into three is nine, but two happen to be common. You take away two from nine, and you get seven. That is why Saptaswar. And these should the notes again they're like the the, the whole bedrock of this music and also uh, the um, what was I saying the bedrock of just intonation music as well. So this is the essence of just intonation. Just intonation means that you're using natural notes found in the physical world, not man-made artificially by using software or by you know creating uh, artificial instruments. Um, it's nesargic swar, jise kehte hain, jise hain, wo hai just intonation. And in mathematical terms, what that means is they are based on these whole number proportion, whole number ratios. I'm just throwing out the technical terms, just so because now we've gotten familiar with the concept. You can see all these ratios: one by one, three by two, four by three, fifteen by eight, five by three, etc., etc. These are all whole number ratios. You don't suddenly have a you know a fourteen point seven by nine. You know that would be not a whole number ratio. So those. And yet, in the Western notes, again, I'm skipping ahead, but the Western notes, they have these weird numbers. They have numbers that go into decimals. They have numbers that go into um, even logarithmic roots, etc., etc. And that's why they are so artificial. And so, uh, very sorry if I am going to sound proselytizing or bigoted, but uh, I am going to come with this bias that the Western notes, the 12 tone equal tempered system, is not at all suitable for Hindustani rag music for sure, and probably any rag music. For this very reason, because they take what are nesargic natural shuddha notes, or not even not shuddha notes, even the komal notes, we'll see how they get there. But they're all natural; they're all whole note intervals, and they tamper them, or temper them, into artificial man-made notes. And that's why they sound. We'll, we'll see that demonstrated later. In fact, um, let's see what we have now. Uh, yeah. So this is just a kind of musical summary of what we've done so far. Uh, all the notes are relative. Uh, you have the seven shuddha, sare gama padani. Um, adding the thing of uh, komal notes. There are four komal notes in the system: rega, dhani, have a shuddha, and have a komal. Um, sare, shuddha re, sare, komal re. Komal just means one step lower. Saga, saga. And Tivra, there's only one sword that has a Tivra. Ma has a Tivra variety. Ma, Tivra, just like Koma, means a step down, Tivra means a step up. So, Ma, Shuddha, Sa, Ma. And um, this is the now we're getting into controversial territory. The system that I'm learning right now does not exactly believe it does not believe in this. <laughs> but this is still very widely taught in uh, music theory and music schools all over the country and beyond. Um, so I'm, I'm repeating this as just the mainstream lay lay level knowledge. Don't take it as I mean definitely take it as not the gospel truth. It's uh, technically it's it's the way it's just like saying just by way of an example Newtonian laws of physics they break down at the Einstein TM level at the general relativity level at the quantum level but they still apply in everyday life you know uh, uh, object wills will uh, you know not come to it blah 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 whatever so just like that um, there are much finer nuances and um, more details which we'll some of which we'll go into but at the level of common everyday functionality. There are these 12 notes, and Sa and Pa are called Achal because they don't have any such variety. They don't have a Koma, they don't have a Tivra. And even um, in the com more complex system, we'll still see that significance. We'll still see that difference between Sa Pa and the other five notes. Uh, octave Sattak, blah blah blah, 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 blah on this. Um, now, uh, sorry, so that was um, the answer number two. So, seven Swar we saw. Um, why there are seven? This brings the total to twelve. Um, uh, okay, I'll just answer these major questions as we go along. I'll start. Uh, I'll just play a little bit. So this is the software. This is the software that I was telling you about. Um, 
I'm just gonna play the shoot the scale right now. So these are the exact um, ratios that we saw here. One by one, uh, nine by eight, five by four, four by three, three by two, five by three, 15 by eight, and two by one. Um, now, why are there 12? Um, I'll have to skip ahead. <coughs> <laughs> so um, this is the maths of what I'm doing. You can this, all the maths is given here. I won't go into the details. Again, I'll leave that for the question answers if anyone's interested. But you can just see all the math being worked out here. How the nodes keep climbing, and this is we're literally applying this Sharjah uh, Pancham Sambhav or the Sapa relationship. We're just applying it sequentially. So we go Sapa, then from Per we make Sa, and then we go to its Per, which is Re. Etc. Etc. Re becomes sa, then it's pa is a dha, etc. Etc. So sapa, re dha, uh, dha uh, sapa, pa re, re dha, dha ga, ga ni, ni ma, nama is a tibrama, um, etc. Etc. So now if you kept going, uh, which I'll show you the um, table as well. Okay, here's the table. Uh, is it readable at all in the back? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, numbers. So, again, without getting into too many of the numbers, the green ones uh, you can see highlighted at the bottom, those are the um, straightforwardly derived from the Sapa Sangha. Uh, the yellow ones I'll explain later once we get into that. But uh, basically, you can just follow the numbers. You can follow the second row. So, this, this row. Um, which has the one by one in the center. Just look for the zero uh, in the top row that has the columns. So the zero column has the one by one. That's the SA. And this is how a grid can be arranged of all the frequency ratios translating into musical pitches used in this music. So the one by one, you go up in the SAPA relationship, you get the per, three by two, nine by eight is the re, uh, nine by, and then 27 by 16 is the dha, et cetera, et cetera. So you go sa pa pa re re dha dha um, dha ga ga ni ni tivrama tivrama uh, goes to uh, komal re. You know, just think of a piano if you're familiar with that. Uh, I, um, I, uh, so they're all powers of two and three. Uh, yeah, powers of two and three. Exactly, exactly. And that series. So you can see how you keep going up the numbers from 729, you go to 2187, etc. etc. I'll just tell you in Western terms, this is actually known because this is taught to again in music theory. It's called the cycle of fifths. In Hindustani terms, all it means that is you're going up by a sapa sabha. Sapa, redha, gani, uh, uh, komal redha, komal re komal dha, komal ga komal ni, uh, komal ni uh, will be uh, shuddhamma. Shuddhama, if you look just in terms of that sambhav, and uh, the ma kapa will take you back to sa, and that total will be 12. So I'll, just, I'll just sing it and show just so it, it helps singing. And I'll, I'll keep, just remember that I'm going to keep adjusting octaves. That means if I'm singing a note that's too high, I'm going to take it down an octave, take it down into the uh, madhya sapta. <coughs> And the context again, we're deriving 12 notes. We're seeing why there are only 12 notes.
going up now actually if you do the math that 12th thing that you'll reach will be very very close to sa but it will not be sa why is that just look at the math we're multiplying by 3 by 2 every time now tell me this is again just basic high school physics uh, maths if you keep multiplying any number by 3 by 2 can you ever return to 1 by 1 you just can't you have to divide because 1 by 1 is like the, the fundamental number so and 1 by 1 is the only true sa in the system it's the only central point that and you can't ever reach it what i'm saying now is what is going to lead to the next level the 22 level but if you just go up 12 times you'll arrive at some some or the other variation of these 12 notes um and that 12th note will be something very very close to a sa if you do the same thing backwards sa ma backwards meaning you go from sa to down to ma instead of going down and going up it's the same thing octave wise sa ma ma ni 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 ga 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 da 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 re re etc etc if i do that again 12 times the 12th note will be something that's very close to sa now it's because of this that we have 12 notes the 12 answer the answer to 12 is the kind of trickiest to understand it's not so obvious um and it's uh, but it's still something that is explainable by physics you know it's still something that is universal in the sense of if you if you want to understand why are there 12 notes in so many different systems uh it's because of this because if you just take the sapa relationship and you redo it multiple times you go up in that cycle if you go up in that cycle the 12th note you reach is basically something sounding like sa and if you go down in that cycle again the 12th note you reach is something sounding like sa so they so you know the ancients probably just decided okay there are 12 notes so that's the explanation for the 12 now ashish das for me everyone with me so far any major confusions or any major problems yeah you can proceed Pythagorean comma, right? I'm coming to that. <laughs> so um, uh, this we saw, and then now what happens is um, with this with this twelve note system, you don't necessarily always have uh, good relationships between all the notes. Um, so what is sambo? Sambhav. 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 Sambhav means relationship or harmony. So the saga sambhav means the relationship of harmony between a sa and a ga. Tapa sambhav similarly between sa and pa. So, um, so uh, going back to that. Uh, sorry. Oops. Yeah. So. Um, Wait, uh, huh? This is where I was gonna. Yeah. Okay. Let's now. Let's try something. Uh, I've got the tantra going on. Okay. I'm gonna play you um, sa re ga, and then hear that ga, and then I'll play something else. <laughs> yeah. Now I'll play that major triad that we talked about. Sa ga pa. You can hear that. Uh, sorry, I, I'm, I, got, I got mixed up. This is something else. But um, if you if you go up by this system, uh, you can like look at what's going on right now. The ga is a fairly high uh, ratio. It's 81 by 64. Now that ga sounds like this. I'll show you. Yeah. You, can you feel that? Now hear this. 
anyone feel a slight difference between those two things? Yeah. yeah. Which one felt more melodious, more harmonious, more more together? Second. Second. First. Okay. No, it's it's a it's a now we're getting into the aesthetic, so it's there's not a right or wrong answer. Because some people will feel because again, especially in Hindustani, we we appreciate disharmony to a very large extent. Just think of Marwa, how long we stand on the Komal Ray. Komal Ray is the second most discordant note in the, in the Sattar from a bland physics perspective. Yet we enjoy it. We, we love it so much. So, uh, you know, so the, this is actually an ironic thing that people who are trained in music, especially in the study, might have uh, instincts that lead away from the kind of uh, standard physics answers. Because we've been trained aesthetically to like things that are moving away from the simplest. You know, it's a very complex, rich form of music. So this girl that I played, the first one, I, I, I wish I could show you the software printout, but you know we have only one projector. Uh, you can come and see it later. It shows you all this. Is the girl that's on the board, the the eighty, the eighty-one by sixty-four. But but now I'll play the girl that some people like, or that's a slightly simpler ratio. This is five by four. And now hear it in the context of a full chord. I'll, I'll put this slightly lower for a second and I'll play that major chord. Here, major chord number one. You can hear that slight shimmering, that slight waving. Now I'll play you a major chord number two. A little more chilled out, a little more relaxed. You can hear less of those things happening. Now that's happening because of this girl. The girl that's on the board was the first one, 81 by 64. But when in the second chord I used the original girl that we talked about, the 5 by 4, what I call the Swayam Bhuga. It actually comes from the Tantra even if you don't tune it. That is much more harmonious in that sense. And uh, the difference between, and whereas this girl has come from that derivation of Sapa. Sapa pa re re dha dha ga. That girl is an 81 by 64. This girl is a 5 by 4. So now if you compare 5 by 4 and 81 by 64, to compare you have to make the denominators correct. So you just multiply and you get 81 by 64 and you get 80 by 64. These are the two girls. And that difference of 81 by 64 versus 80 by 64 expressed as a mathematically is 81 by 80. And that's what's called a Pythagorean comma. So Pythagoras, in like around the time of Buddha, around 500, 600 BC, discovered all these things. He just used, uh, you know, strings tuning each other and did this kind of experimentation, going up by sapa somehow, going down, etc., etc. And he discovered, oh, if you go up by sapa somehow and you get a girl, you get one kind of girl. But if you just tune, listen naturally to a string and you try to tune to its pure girl that's inherent in the string itself, then you get a different girl. And that difference between them is this tiny little thing, an 81 by 80. Very hard to perceive, but if I play it here sequentially, you can probably tell it. So I'm going to play two girls in sequence. Yeah, everyone can hear that difference very clearly, the different notes. Now I'll put the tanpura up and hear them in the context of sa as musical Hindustani notes. This is a 5 by 4 this is the Swayam Bhuga. This is the 81 by 64. It's a slightly sharper girl. This girl has come from the Sapa Sambha. So now, of course, it's up to you. Which one do you like better? You might like the girl. In, and as far as I know, or, or as far as this system goes, the, the, the limited system that we're going to talk about more, with these two girls, some rags will use this girl, some rags will use that girl. Why? Maybe because if there's no, um, maybe because Pa is very important in a rag, so it's more important that the girl be akin to the pur, be more uh, have affinity with the pur than with the sa itself or something like that. Then you might lose that 81 by 64. So that's how you move from the 12 tone system into the shruti system. So shruti, in, used in this sense, just to clarify, because shruti actually has so many different meanings. People use it with all these meanings. Um, shruti, I'm using very specifically in the sense of a very of a specifically defined pitch or musical note within the octave which can then be used for musical expression. So it, it will be a specific frequency ratio. 
uh, not a specific frequency because our system is relative, but a specific frequency ratio, a specific relationship with Sa. So that's the whole. This, is, this reveals the need for that shruti, and this difference again from the ancient treatises, the what's called the Pythagorean comma in the Western system or in the modern scientific system, is called the pramana shruti. Pramana means measure. So the, this is in one sense, uh, or you know, according to some, this is possibly the smallest perceivable musical difference between two notes that most ears can hear. So this tiny difference. So the argument is that if the d distance was even smaller than this, you wouldn't be able to perceive them as different notes. But these you can clearly perceive as different. If you play them together, you can hear that. That is what's called a beat. That beating is what is a is uh, is what shows that it's disharmonious. It's clashing with each other. So that pramana shruti, if you use that as a measuring device, and those uh, twelve notes that we saw earlier, if you start uh, other than sa and pa, remember because sa and pa are achal, so you don't touch sa and pa. Every of the other ten notes, you either um, add or subtract one pramana shruti from each of those ten notes, and you'll get a second variety of that same note. That's how you get twenty-two shrutis. So you had seven shrutiswar. You added four komal and one tibra, became twelve notes in an octave. Those twelve, you take away sa and pa because they're achal. You're left with ten notes: uh, rega, uh, komal, re, uh, both res, both gas, both mas, both dhas, and both nis. And then you create a pramana shruti pair by introducing two varieties of each of these ten notes: one lower and one higher by one pramana shruti. And that's how you come to the 22 sh shruti system. That's uh, this is the derivation. So that same kind of chart that we saw earlier. Now this is just in a graphical form. Again, the black sa is right in the middle. Uh, the arrows and the colors are showing you the sambha. That's what the the niche ka thing is just a legend. So the we we'll look at the blue. We're only at the blue level right now. Blue is going up by a sapa sambha. That is multiplying by three by two frequency ratio. You go up, you get all these notes. Um, just to explain, so that you can follow, a capital letter means a shuddha swar, a lower case means a vikrit swar, either komal or tibra. The numbers are needed only when you come to the shuddhi system. In the twelve note system, you just need capital and small. Once you come to the shuddhi system, a komal ga can be a komal ga one or komal ga two. Similarly, a shuddha re can be a shuddha re one, shuddha re two. So that's why this is how you have the twenty-two shuddhi system. So far, we've got how many? We've got sa pa re dha ga ni ma, and downwards we have sa ma komal ni komal ga komal dha komal re. So we've got all the twelve notes here um, within this thing. Let's add further. Now we have now we're introducing the saga somehow. Remember that that pa wala ga didn't sound so good to some of us, or it sounded different. So now we're going to add the swayam bhuga. So the first thing to be added will be the sa. You just go up by that amount. You'll come to the five by four. And similarly, you you can go up from the other notes by that same amount, and you'll get these notes. Again, those of you who are slightly familiar with music, you'll be able to think of it in your mind. Sa <coughs> ga, you get that ga one. Pa pa ni sa ga, you get the ni. Ma ma tha sa ga, that's the tha. So that five by three, the one I showed earlier when I was creating the seven shudh swar. These are all the notes. The dha, the the ga, and the ni are derived from this kind of thing. The the tibra ma uh, can be both. The the shuddha re uh, is a re one. So that's a re one. This is a re two. So we say these are the two rays. This is re one. This is re two. Again, now it's up to you which one you like better. But one is clearly lower. One is a little bit higher. Difference is the same, a pramana shruti. And finally, now just like for sa, from sa we went up by pa amount. We got this. We went down. We got the ma wale things. Similarly, ga we go up, we get these. We do go down, we get these ones. So these are the second varieties of komal re, komal dha, komal ga, komal ni, and tibra uh, shuddha ma. Uh, so this is. Ji. 
शुद्ध नीचे वाला है कैपिटल इज शुद्ध um that's confusing with some people online especially use the the mati ever as a capital but i i kind of just thought shuddha is always capital vikrit is small regardless of whether komal or diva so this in uh, is the entire 22 shruti system starting with sa go up and down with these two different relationships the saga samba and the sapa samba and you have a full 22 shruti system so you understand no, no i i just count the 5 and 12 and 5 yeah exactly so you and that's that's 22 and you can see that sign point don't repeat anywhere the the if you just kind of connect the dots you'll see the two mm-hmm. different varieties and um this software now i'll i'll just play this uh, should i play in the order of this happening uh, or i'll i'll just play them all sequentially so you can hear all 22 should be from 1 to 22 from 1 to 22 yeah so it's going to sound fairly unmusical because we don't ever do such thing in music <laughs> in normal yeah in the same way that we be able to notice the differences in pitch yeah so i'm going to just play the 22 shrutis one by one see this is sa give the tanpura is the tanpura okay loud enough thoda come should you shut that off huh should you shut that off so that we can no because the no, thing no, is the relationship but then it's then it's obscuring <laughs> as well chal i'll reduce the compromise you can, i think I, I, again anyway we'll talk i think this is the difference between the inside perspective and the western perspective because the inside perspective always wants that sound to be like really loud because only that can we tell what a note is but anyway so now it's compromise for the song Sing along with it so you kind of know where we are. Sa re 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 table we looked at earlier how this thing came so now this will make more sense the green so far uh, as long as we're within that green line we're within the sapa derived ones the minute you come to that uh, seventh column on the high side you, instead of going to that complicated number which is 2187 by 2048 we come to a much simpler number which is 16 by 15 and that's why we jump from the sapa samba to the saga samba similarly and then continue on uh, similarly on the lower end from the ma side uh once we come to uh, komal re 1 uh we would have gone to a, another complex number like 1024 by 729 instead of that we have a vastly more simple uh 135 by 128 as a ratio and then again we continue and you can see that those famous ratios the 5 by 4 comes in that uh yellow line and uh similarly the um, let's say i don't know okay there are no very famous ones here but 16 by 15 maybe um and the red i put x's in front of them because those are the limits those are the ones we don't use so if you followed that 22 shruti and made it a 24 shruti system you'd have an extra pa and an extra sa over here or there you'd have a sa and then another pa so on either side but because they're so close to sa and we want sa and pa to be absent we don't use them that's why it's limited to that 22 shruti um just an acknowledgement of uh, some other people who have talked about this at a length and from whom i you know learned a lot and derived a lot of inspiration uh, dr vidya dhar oak based in thane uh, near mumbai he is also developed yes he is developed a 22 shruti harmonium so that's a proper uh, acoustic physical instrument which you can play it has levers extra from the normal harmonium which then allows you to tune each note to either this shruti or that shruti and again the difference each time is a pramana shruti so because this is again a rigid i mean it's not the 12 but at the 22 level it is still a rigid and fixed system that's why he's able to do something like that 
with the same normal keyboard of 12 notes, it just adds levers so that you can switch either the higher variety or the lower and get 22. Um, P. Sandamurthy is a musicologist, I think from a Carnatic tradition. He wrote a book, I think back in the 1920s or 30s, and he had this whole table. The only thing I found that he, uh, he, he didn't acknowledge this saga somehow. He explained everything in terms of Sapa, and just when he was making the mathematical tables, when he'd come to that uh, place where it's either 81 or you know just a simple 5 by 4, he'd just say, oh, it's very close, so we're just correcting it. I'm like, you can't do that. If we're, if we're basing our whole explanation on things being pure and mathematically accurate, we have to stick to that. So the Saga Sambhav was introduced to me by Vidya Dharok, that you actually have a 5 by 4 thing also. <laughs> so now, uh, showing, I mean, now I'm just talking about how the 22 Shruti system, 22 Shrutis is just mentioned a, a lot. If I'm not wrong, Guruji can correct me, uh, even some of our Dhrupad Bandishes mention 22 Shrutis. So, you know, and whereas our musical system doesn't even follow that. But that 22 Shruti concept is just so prevalent and so widely talked about in the in the tradition um, that, you know, it's it's just withstood the test of time in terms of conceptuality. But in terms of music, there are, peop there are many people don't believe in just limiting to these. So for example, Pandit Arvind Thate, who is ironically himself a harmonium player, uh, he's written an excellent book, which is very scientific, very accurate, which talks about 36 or even 48 or other Shrutis that, uh, you know, again, you can just extend the grid. I can show more details on this for more people, people who are interested later. Uh, the air can make out, uh, yes, the yes, yes, and of course, I mean, this is not, I mean, this is just the beginning. Yeah. I'll, I'll come more. to, <laughs> we'll come to, there are more, there are more. Yeah, but Sadar Admi, who will Karsak can distinguish case. Yeah, Sadar Admi, Sadar Admi, yeah, if you are, you know, in that ambience and if you are listening, then you will be able to discern these, these positions. It will not happen. And a lot of music in Indian music is, is dependent on the unseen un unheard notes also mm. the seven seen notes what you see what is what is manifested mm. and there are notes which are which works behind and this is why these these type of positions are created so this is why we have so many of uh, more than more than much more. I'll just come. So is it possible? Also yeah. applicable to Carnatic. By and large, I think, at least still the Pentru Shruti system, but I, I can't speak with authority because I've never trained in that <laughs> tradition. So I, I don't want to misrepresent. But I'm I'm sure it is, because it's the same principles and the rag principle is you know applicable to both. Yeah, Natya Shastra Bharat Munis is common to both. Yeah, exactly. And you know all these texts as far as I know they all talk about twenty two shootings. So um, just these couple uh, more, my, my own new system that I'm developing, Hindustani 2.0, I've, I've derived at least proportions, ratios for 72 Shrutis. Perhaps more will come as I keep going along. And then uh, Gustaki Maf, the Dagarwani system. Uh, this is the most fascinating one I've found and you know, I've completely not even started to understand it, of course, I'm very young. Uh, seven varieties of each notes, and each note meaning these 12 notes. So again, the 12 does come, the 12 is retained. So there's Sa, Kumar, Re, Kumar, Shudhar, etc, etc, those 12 notes. Each of these 12 notes has seven shades. So you have the Shudha note, let's say it is even Sa. So you have Sa, then you have Komal, Komal Tar, Komal Tam, that's lower, and then you have Sa, you have uh, Tivra, Tivra Tar, Tivra Tam. Even for the Komal, Sakari. Okay, so the words are Komal, Adi Komal, Sakari, and Uchi. Tivrtar, Even for the Sa. So this whole Sa and Pa being Achal is broken or is not believed in by this system. And Guruji, for example, has shown me by singing. <laughs> like I was just saying, like, uh, you know, in informal demonstration, Guruji himself has, for example, literally shown me that how once you get into that rag and then you go and come and then you can see that, and then me, like, I, I wouldn't have been able to do it, hear it, if he hadn't told me. But because he told me to listen for that, I saw that when he came back to that sa, it was not the, the standard sa. But is that your upward or is it historically from your lineage? We have. Uh, it is not my creation. It has been told uh, in uh, Natya Shastra also, and we we more trust the 
what is Sang uh, Sarang Dev's, uh, you know, this thing. So, so there are for, 49 Kut Tan. They also talk about 40, 49 Kut Tan. So every every note has a possibility of seven <coughs> different positions. So Sa is considered Achal, but Sa is also not Achal. Because right. it's, it's the, how you are, it's how you are throwing the light into in the prism. And from where you lead that light, from what spectrum, what, what you want to enter into. Clever. So that's all, all about yeah. that. Colors keep you shades. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. there's shades of colors also now we see. So that then what what is attracting you also? Because there, there's your color also. And what your color is also getting attracted by that color. So that that creates another sort of sort of <laughs> energy and color that you you have that position in your your perception. your perception or I don't yeah. know what to say. So on that note, on that beautiful note of color, we come just very quickly to the rags. This is again just an overview of like what rags, just to bring everyone on the same page. Every rag, of course, has the sa. Most rags, uh, meaning 99.9% .9 perhaps, the more or per, one of them at least should be there. Uh, normally it has between five and seven notes, etc., etc. but there are exceptions. That's why I keep using these careful words, normally and mostly and all that. Um, this again, we're get, coming coming back to the mainstream theory, uh, which is taught in most music schools, in the Madhya for example, or many others. Uh, not believed by all systems. Important to point out. For example, Dalai <laughs> does not look at things in exactly this way. But because it's mainstream, I'm just kind of uh, acknowledging this. The arrow of the ascent and descent, va uh, pakad, vadi, sambali, the king note, queen note. Um, more focusing on the shrutis. The way you pick notes, or out of this 22 shruti system even, I'm going to again limit myself to the 22 shrutis just for the sake of convenience. Uh, how do you pick which of these shrutis do you use in a rag? So harmony, because har like vibrational harmony I talked about in the description. Uh, here's the schematic, uh, just a bit colorful to entertain. Yaman, for example, you start with sa, then you uh, obviously have the pa, and you have the re too, because you're just going up that line. So that gives you your sa, pa, re, and also your dha. Um, so you have all these in, in sa, pa, harmony with each other. And then you derive, you go up instead of right and you get your ga. And uh, from that ga, you get your knee and you get your ma. The, sorry, the ga one, the knee one, and the ma one. So visually, if you can see, Sa, Pa, Re, Dha, and then you have Sa, Ga, Ni, Ma. So if you just draw a box to show what is the Swar set or what is the scale of Yaman, it would be this, this much of a box. So you see how it's all contiguous, it's all very contained in one box, which means the like this is just a graphical, graphical representation of what's happening musically. So things that are on this graph close together and not disparate. Like we don't suddenly pluck the, the you know the um, that mer two, that small mer two at the very end of the green line. That's also a tivrama. We could have taken that. Why didn't we? Because it doesn't have any relationship to any of the other notes. Whereas this um, the small mer one, the yellow one, at the end of the yellow line has a relationship. It is a pur of the knee, which is a pur of the ga, which is the ga of the sa. So that's how you see that all the notes are interlinked and they all follow this kind of. By, uh, harmony and this uh, sambhav relationship. That's how the rags. Similarly, just other examples like sa, uh, um, uh, rag like karavati, saga pa dhani sa, ga straightforward up, pa sideways, the dha we'd also take as the pa of the ga, uh, or, or the, sorry, the ma of the pa, what uh, ma of the ga, and the ni is a komal ni. So we derive that from as close as possible. From the, yeah, see that now it's. It's a bit unusual because it's not literally connected, but it's in that direction, it's in the direction of the girl. Similarly, etc. These are, I think, mostly based on the other Oak's work. Um, the 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 Malkos is is a beautiful example, and I'll just spend one minute on that just because I find it so. Well, awesome. They're all komal, right? They're all komal. In the old language, should the mom is called a komal mom very often. Yeah. So yes, in that sense, it's it's a komal mom. Why why is that? Like I was always puzzled. Why is a Shuddhama, what we normally modern days call Shuddhama, why is it called a Komalma? It's because of this progression, because you're going downwards. The, the, that's the only Shuddha Swar you see in purple. The only purple Shuddha Swar is that Ma. 
That's why it's called a shuddha, uh, a, a komal ma, because you go downwards from sides, in a sense an undertone. That undertones don't occur naturally, they have to be derived. So they're using that same relationship, so they're still harmonious in that sense, but they're not occurring naturally in the harmonic series. That's why, so they're negative. They're, they, it's like mi minus numbers, negative numbers. Minus one doesn't exist in nature, you can't have minus one apples. But it does exist in a concept level because you can owe someone an apple. So you do have minus one apple in that sense. So think of Kobol Swazi. Imaginary under root of minus one. Exactly. Well, that's at a whole different level. There we'd go, like the in-between stage of things, we'd go into the Western system, which I'll come to if we have time. And uh, yeah, so Malkos, uh, you go straight forwardly down. You just do Sama, Makama, 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 and you get all the notes of uh, the Malkos. Sama, Ma, Ni, Ni, Ga, Ga, Dha. And that block, if you do murchana of it, which means you take different sa uh, notes as the sa, you get five different notes, which are the five notes of the guitar, or the same notes as the black notes of the piano. And you get five rags, Malkos, Dhani, Bhopali, Durga, and Meg. So just an interesting aside. Bhairavi, for example, again, just uh, reading this. Um, needing more shrutis. Um, <coughs> So the, one of the reasons, like what we talked earlier about how other systems are more, the, the knee, the komal knee that we heard in the very beginning, the kharaj sa string, that knee that you hear is not in any of these 22 shrutis, because it's the seventh partial. You're asking about prime numbers. A, a new prime number cannot be in this, because this is a five based, five limit system. So that seventh partial, mm, again if you hear it, mm, it's very evident in the tantra. You can almost instantly hear it, in any electronic tantra almost. So that's lower than the lowest of the knee in this 22 Shruti system. That's one example why we need more. So the seventh part, Sanvar, um, just examples, I'll race through them. If you understand this, great. If not, no need. Uh, need to modulate, we're coming to... Okay, so now this brings us that last thing, which I'll talk about later. Why did Western music deviate from possibly the rest of the world and start getting into this temperament business. Western music, especially around uh, maybe Renaissance time or slightly earlier, uh, late medieval, um, started exploring mod key modulation. So on the same instrument, you play using different keys. In Hindustani terms, what that means is, imagine Bahadin Sa playing on his Rudra Veena, and some days he plays with C as his Sa, some other days he plays with an E flat as his Sa, that never happens. Any instrument has a defined sa. Now you might tune it slightly up and down, but you, you don't change the whole note. While singing also, Guruji will never sing Marwa in, in C and then suddenly you know start doing Bageshwari in a Komalga in a, in a E flat. You just don't do that. You have one sa for the whole thing. So Hindustani music doesn't need anything beyond these uh, pure notes because this is how we work. Change the system, so, ha, but in a yeah, performance, yeah. It's we, not we, in a performance, yeah. but, but when we have to... Exactly. But this instrumental need for being able to modulate to keys, because if you have these pure notes, as you see, the, the pure notes never circle back. In, in, in uh, Western music, conventional theory talks about a circle of fifths. Now, as you can see, it's not a circle, because the maths doesn't allow you to circle back. As we saw from that table. So, basically, the key change is based on the Okay, uh, that's again well, getting that, into the Western aesthetic that's different uh, thing. Our ears are not trained. But that cycle thing is by temperament. So, because there is a need, we're coming to this, the need for temperament, uh, you have to be able to play the major chord from each, from each key uh, or from each note. So, even if you're in C, for example, and you're in the C major, so you're in what we would call the Shuddha Sattak, Sarika Mapadani. But now suppose you're playing the, you know, you're playing the three chord, which means you're playing on ga, you're playing sa ga pa. So, this is your one chord. Now I'll put the sound for all. So you have your one chord or major chord, sa ga pa. Now suppose from ga you have to play. This is the minor three chord. Now I can play this, the this the ga ka pa is a harmonious sa pa. Can you hear that? Nice and clean. Suppose instead of this I played this. 
Yeah, you hear that? That's because I'm playing the higher the. I'm playing the you know uh, 27 by 16 instead of the 5 by 3. Now suppose I had a normal harmonium in which I only have one the. Which the would I put? If I put this second the, it won't be a per of the ga. So if I want to play a chord on that ga, I can't. I, I don't have a harmonious per. It's going to sound. It's going to sound like this. So it's going to sound awful. That's why you needed to temper it. So what they do, uh, same thing like I did. Um, so the Western solution, make the dist I'm, I'm oversimplifying about 500 to six, 800 years of history. The solution that ultimately they decided was make all the notes equal. The distance, the musical distance between every single of the 12 notes in the modern system is equal. They have the, that's why it's called 12 TET, meaning 12 tone equal temperament, which means that there are 12 notes within an octave each of them is equally tempered, meaning the distance that each of them occupies is exactly the same. Interval wahirai. Interval wahirai. And what is that interval? Again, it's crazy maths. So I can't, I, I haven't even shown it. Decibels and all. The two, it's more than decibels. It's getting into ir irrational na numbers because the, the octave is into two. The upar kasa is double the frequency of the pele kasa. So the twelfth under root of two yes. is the musical proportion of each semitone or each sa to komal relationship in the western equal tempered system. So that's an irrational number. It's an un twelfth under root of two. Even the square root of two is irrational. So the twelfth under root, you can imagine how irrational it is. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, so that's, uh, this, this is just a summary of what I just said. The octave is divided into twelve equal parts. Each semitone is in this kind. This is an approximate number. That decimal keeps going on. Um, semitone is further divided for fineness into hundred cents. Cent just means hundredth part of the semitone. <coughs> and by the Hindustani standards, or by the just intonation standards, by the physics standards, each note other than the tonic, tonic is the equivalent of a sa, it's the tonal center of an octave, is slightly out of tune. And that how much it's out of tune can be measured in cents. Uh, the fifths, meaning the per, any any note on the piano ka per is mo almost in tune. It is off by only 1.955 cents. Thirds are fairly out of tune, meaning ga. Any note you pick on the piano, you play its ga, that ga is fairly off. I'll show you. Okay, so we're in C, we're in the key of C, C major. Yeah, hear that saga? And now instead hear this. Yeah? This is the <coughs> pure natural go, Swayambhu go 5x4. And this is the piano go. Can you hear that difference? slightly being sharper, that's that's the, what we're talking about. So you can see that plus 13.686. So they're all slightly high. They don't sound nicely in tune. And uh, now especially like even more, like even with 12 tone equal temperament, uh, as long as they were acoustic instruments and uh, you know, you'd still have some slight adjustments. So you might still have had some natural notes happening now and then just because natural notes come naturally, like literally I mean, like for example, a, a, a choir, when a choir is singing, they tune to each other. If they're, even if they're singing a chord, and so the note that they'd sing according to the piano would be say X, because they're trying to be in tune with each other and sound harmonious, they adjust that note a little bit to be genuinely in a harmony, in, in a physics sense. So uh, even that has uh, further reduced by the prevalence of digital music and technology, because including me, digital music producers, we work on technology, software is our instrument. And s most software provides only these uh, fixed 12 tem equal temperament notes. Um, which is why um, I developed, for example, this thing where I can play all 22 shrutis. This is a free software, anyone can install it, it turns your laptop into an instrument where you can access these 22 shrutis. Um, it can also be customized to whatever number of shrutis or whatever types of shrutis you want. Um, Etc. Etc. Uh, blah 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 blah. blah. Okay. So I think uh, 
yeah, I'm just breezing through all this. You can glance at it and uh, yeah, so these are some of the proposed solutions, but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. A little slight marketing pitch for free. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's my contact. And um, yeah, further things. So I think I'll stop here. Uh, thank you so much for your patience. I hope I haven't uh, overloaded you. And please, uh, people, thank you.